Chapter 041, Sava Sophia and the group visited the biome projects of Steph and Aura, and while the cats weren't personally fans of the dog's freezing winter wonderland, they still could easily admit that it was a very pretty place. It couldn't compete with the female wolf's massive pine forest and the amazing smell in there. While they were at it, the wolves also got tasked to create a volcanic area to make sure Steph's cold hell wouldn't spread too much. Oh ho, civilization! The group was back traveling in the regular world when Sophia spotted a cobblestone road after leaving a forest they had been traversing for a little while. We are really close to a city. My detection magic has also noticed it by now. About 5,000 people, give or take some. Fen nodded at her. It's probably the place our princess mentioned and about half an hour away from here. That sounds about right. Anna nodded. Sava's supposed to have that many inhabitants. Let's go. Steph got excited over seeing a new city. Should we get Mira and Faye before we get there? Currently, the group was traveling without them. They said they're busy for a while, so it's probably better not to. Chloe answered her. Busy with each other? Maya tilted her head. Curiously enough, I had no intention of asking my parents what they're up to when they're alone with each other. The pink fox just stared at her for a while. Understandable. Also, Ari rolled her eyes while looking at the two. I think it's not a bad thing they're not with us. We already have two tigers with us, one of them being the nation's first princess. People will be bewildered enough already, even without the overseer of magic being with us. A good point. Maya nodded. We'd probably need a week to explain that alone. Sophia's portal thing not even counted in. Oh, that part's going to be easy. The blonde sounded strangely confident, for some reason. You, out of all people, have a plan? The jaguar didn't believe her. I absolutely have. She smiled at her. An absolutely flawless plan that will spare us the trouble of explaining the plan. Ari paused for a moment while she continued to stare at the short tiger. You're going to use your portals to bring over Menzer and let him do all the explaining because you can't be bothered, right? You know me so well. Sophia was touched. That's exactly the plan. Well, I can't really blame you. The black-haired girl also thought it was too much of a pain. Thank you. All right, let's go and see a new city. Steph wanted to get going. For the next half hour, the group walked along the road before eventually arriving at the outskirts of Sava. The city obviously wasn't nearly as big as the capital, but it was far from small, either. Another big difference was that no walls encircled the city, giving it a pretty open and inviting feel. Oh, I think I like places without walls and gates better. Sophia liked the casual design of the city. Yes. Anna agreed. The capital is the capital though. It has to look extra impressive. Not to mention the extra layer of protection. Not necessarily from monsters or enemies, but it prevents shady people from entering freely, thanks to the controlled gates. Yeah, that's a good point. The blonde nodded. I still prefer the openness, though. I do, too. There do seem to be some guards on patrol, though. As they were getting closer, Ari spotted a group of uniformed dog beast folk along the path they were following. Hmm, Sophia's gaze focused on a specific part of the guards. I don't think I've ever actually used a sword since being here. Oh. Steph also stared at the sword dangling on their sides. That sounds like it would be a ton of fun. I want to learn how to use a sword. Absolutely. The sisters already got sidetracked before arriving in the capital. Do you want me to teach you a thing or two? Anna smiled at them. It's been a while, but I used to have regular sword training sessions held by the highest-ranking officers. Princess things, you know. Let's go. The two were very interested. Oh, now that you mention that, while it wasn't a military officer, I used to have some sword training in the past, too. Maya also joined the conversation. Eh? Sophia hadn't seen that one coming. Do you remember Rashk? The lizard man from the adventurer party in my hometown. He used to teach me in the past. Why? The blonde only got more confused. 
You were using magic and being a nuisance to him with it ever since you were little, right? That was exactly the reason, Dot. The cat girl's voice turned cheeky. He's been using a sword forever, and he was confident about beating me in a fight using them, because I always won when I used my magic. He thought it would be unfair to fight me without any prior training, though, and here we are. And? Steph tilted her head. Were you able to learn it? Rashk regretted teaching me quite quickly. She got even more cheeky. I soon became an absolute menace in both magic and sword fighting to him, Dot. Haha, <laughs> you're great. The dog girl was a fan of her sister's girlfriend. Ehe, <laughs> Dot. Why have you never mentioned that before? Sophia just looked at her. No idea. The cat girl shrugged. I mostly forgot about it myself until Anna mentioned having been trained in the past. Fighting with a sword is nice and all, but in all honestly, magic is SOO much more fun. I think so, too. The princess nodded a few times. I still want to give it a try. The sisters synced up perfectly. Sure thing, I'll add it to the list of things to do in our off time. Maya smiled at them. Oh, speaking of things to do. We totally forgot to get started on the glowy bioluminescence forest. Right. Steph, too, had forgotten about it. True. The same was the case for the older sister. We even got the swampy area bits to try and create such a biome, but I just put it in a corner of my domain without ever doing anything with it. To be fair, we were quite preoccupied with our already ongoing biomes. Chloe tried to come up with an excuse. True. Everyone agreed with her. And we were even more preoccupied with the hot springs. Maya, too, had an excuse. True. The girls agreed with that even more. So many fun things to do, dot. Sophia looked quite happy about the situation they were in. Let's go. She wasn't alone with that feeling. We first have to deal with the city, though. Ari pointed towards it. There's a lot we have to do in Sava, after all. Yeah, let's go shopping. The jaguar just looked at Sophia. While I do like that idea, that's not what I meant. I know, Dot. Smiling at her, the blonde started walking towards the place again. After walking for a few minutes more, they arrived at the patrolling guards area, and those naturally didn't fail to notice the interesting composition of the group. Greetings to, huh, a tiger? Wait, two of them. One of the guards started greeting them when he noticed the duo. Whoa, you're right. His colleague had the same reaction. It really has been a while since I got that reaction, Dot. Sophia's expression turned nostalgic. A good day to you. Anna put on a perfect business smile and turned on her princess mode. We are indeed of the Tiger family. We come from the capital and are currently on a mission father, King Menzer, has sent us. It wasn't the reason they were traveling, but his list of places that would be nice to get a portal was why they ended up in the city of Sava, so she wasn't lying. Technically telling the truth really was a specialty of tigers. On a mission of his majesty? The first guard got loud. Did you say father just now? So did the other one? Wait, he then took a better look at Anna. I think I saw you before when I was in the capital. It's a pleasure to meet you. Her smile got even more perfect. My name is Anna. I am King Menzer's daughter and this nation's first princess. No way. The two guards unionized. You better get used to this exchange quick. Maya awkwardly scratched her cheek while glancing at Steph and Chloe beside her. This will happen every time we visit a lively place. The cat girl spoke from experience as she went through that a lot with her blonde tiger on their way to the capital. Afterward, the model princess kept explaining the situation while the blonde tiger decided to completely stay out of the conversation. Everyone knows that no one loves attention more than her, but while it made her feel nostalgic about her previous travels, this kind of exchange was rather boring and tiring. Because of that, she opted to let Anna take care of it. She was the princess, after all. She had nothing to do with any of it. This was the excuse she tried hard to gaslight herself into the entire time. Chapter 042, Eccentric The group finally arrived at Sava, 
one of the cities in the Beast Folk Kingdom that Menzer had asked the blonde to build a portal to connect various places with each other as she had offered prior to their departure. Naturally, upon their arrival, Anna and Sophia immediately became the center of attention, thanks to them being tigers. I am aware that tigers are rare outside the immediate area of the capital, but we still aren't that far away, are we? Anna let out a tired sigh when she looked at the group. The guard shouldn't have been that surprised, right? People got surprised over me even in the capital. Sophia slowly shook her head. Because no one ever saw you before. Ah, the princess paused for a moment. I guess I just answered my own question, huh? Kinda. Aura nodded. It's also the fact that tigers are basically celebrities. Absolutely everyone knows who they are and what they stand for. She took a quick glance at Fan and Maya during the second part. The duo turned their heads away, feeling reminded of the time when Sophia turned herself into a tiger, and neither of them realized just how big of a deal that was because they forgot that tigers were the royals of the beast folk. I guess you have a point there. Anna didn't question her explanation. This is actually the furthest away from the capital I ever was already, so this is very surprising to me. It will only get worse the farther we travel. Ah, she awkwardly scratched her cheek. Ari, I'll be counting on you once my princess etiquette reaches its limit. Anna smiled at her. You were much better at those lessons, after all. As long as you try, I'll gladly help you out. The jaguar didn't mind helping her out. Thank you. Why is she better than you at it? You are the princess here. Maya had to make a comment on that. In the first place, why had Ari taken those lessons at all? Because Ari is Ari. She's the best at everything. The tall tiger sounded super smug about it. Also, mother said that we should take those lessons together, because she will be with me all the time, anyway. Not to mention that she knew that Ari was more the type for it even though I was born the princess. I love how absolutely everyone was treating you as a couple for ages already, and you two dense idiots only managed to accept your feelings last year. The cat girl rolled her eyes in response. The dense couple in question awkwardly turned their heads away as they could say nothing in their defense. Should we get going? Sophia pointed at the entrance of the city. I want to get over with it and explore the place. There might be some interesting food here. Let's go. Maya, the fellow food enthusiast and main cook of the group, liked the plan. Just so you know, I'll make you partake in those princess and or tiger explanations in the future, as well. Ari lightly glared at her. It's not just related to Anna, after all. Why do you want to make your life even harder? The blonde tilted her head. You know that I'm useless for those kinds of things, and only create more chaos when I'm part of such conversations. I hate those self-aware tigers, the jaguar gave up on the plan for the time being. The group finally entered the city and continued to follow the cobbled main road for a while, taking in the sights. However, as it was a perfectly normal place, not much different from a district in the capital they'd been in for the longest time, there didn't seem to be much to explore. The only difference was the curious onlookers. Fortunately, everyone was taking their distance as the group was a little difficult to approach with so many high-ranking people. By the way, does anyone know where we need to go to meet the mayor or whatever to talk about the things we need to talk about? Sophia, the usual voice of reason, discovered a slight flaw in the plan. Ah. They all had the same reaction and stopped walking. Well, it probably should be a bigger estate that shouldn't be too hard to find. Ari looked around for a little bit. We could also just ask someone. Fortunately, after walking along the main street for a few minutes longer, the problem solved itself as the group ended up in front of a mansion with two guards in front of the entrance. Upon asking, they confirmed that this was indeed the place of the city's mayor. Thanks to the two tigers, they also didn't even need to ask for an audience and were guided right inside the mansion. I guess you two being tigers does have its perks. Maya looked at the duo while they were waiting in the entrance area of the mansion. It makes getting audiences way easier. Not that we'd need any sort of audiences without them in the first place. It wasn't an immediate positive thing for Chloe. True. The cat girl nodded. 
it would be much less complicated without them. Much more boring, too. The tigers in question did not appreciate their exchange. Speaking of boring, a new female voice joined their conversation. I was not expecting to welcome the nation's first princess and the blonde newcomer today. How do I come to this unexpected honor? In front of them stood a black-haired dog girl with floppy ears who seemed to be around her forties. My name is Vess, and I'm the mayor of this lovely little city. How can I be of help to those prominent guests, newcomer? Sophia pointed at herself. I'm already known around here? Everyone who's even the slightest bit informed in an area of at least three months of traveling from there knows about the new eccentric blonde tiger that is turning the capital upside down. The mayor smiled at her. She called me eccentric, Maya. She immediately started pouting. What do you want me to do here? The cat girl tilted her head. Applaud her for the impressive display of professionalism by downplaying it by so much? Gore. She just growled at her. Anyway, Anna decided to ignore them and turned on her princess mode again. I'm pleased to meet you, Mayor Vess, and happy to be welcomed so warmly. While you already know who I am, I'd still like to introduce myself. I am Anna, daughter of the royal family and the first princess of this nation. Father, King Menzer, sent us on a mission, and your city is on the list of places he tasked us to visit. I, I see. There's no need to be worried, Mayor Vess. The tall tiger smiled at her after noticing how her expression changed for the worse. I have never heard anything negative about how Sava is ruled. Father hasn't sent me for this reason, either. It's a complicated matter, so I would like to ask for a more private area to continue our conversation. Of course. Hearing that she didn't seem to be in trouble, the black-haired dog girl seemed a lot more relaxed again and pointed to her right. Please follow me to a meeting room where we can talk without interruption. While following the mayor to the meeting room, Sophia, Maya, Steph, and Chloe kept staring at Anna with massive smiles on their faces. W what? The tall tiger didn't like that. Princess mode Anna is amazing, dot. Steph was the first to reply. Exactly, dot. Maya agreed. The contrast between that and the regular Anna is something else entirely. Super hot, too. Steph gave her a thumbs up. Such a gap is a massive turn on. Absolutely. The cat girl nodded along. T thanks. Anna wasn't sure how to feel about that. Could you two stop being horny for even a single day? Sophia, Ari, and Chloe all shook their heads in unison. No they had no intention of complying with that. Impossible. We noticed. I don't want to interrupt the conversation, but we have arrived. While awkwardly scratching her cheek, Vess pointed at an open door leading into a meeting room with a massive table surrounded by around 15 chairs. Ah. Everyone but the wolves, who couldn't care less about the topic, got embarrassed and silently entered the room before sitting on an empty chair while Aura and Finn got comfortable in the corner. Sue, waiting for a little moment longer after everyone found a chair, the mayor faced Anna. Again, what can I do for you all today? And with that, it's your turn, Sophia. The princess pointed at her fellow tiger. It's the project of the eccentric blonde, after all. MRR. The eccentric one did not appreciate that. Anyway. She got over it soon enough, though. It's more of a side project but we're currently trying to improve the infrastructure in the kingdom and how cities are connected with the capital. Oh. Are there plans to build new roads? Maybe a straighter route to improve traveling time? Sorry, I don't do straight things. Sophia shook her head a few times. I don't quite understand. Obviously, the mayor got confused over that. Regardless of that, while I do like the idea of improving travel times, I can't see how we could afford to rebuild the road network. Sava is doing well, but I can't see a way to budget that in without putting a major strain on our finances. The network itself won't be financed by the connected cities. We're planning to run it on a per-use basis. Basically, the network will be told. Each city only needs to accommodate for that part, with a building to process the tolling, for example. Des needed a moment to process it. Okay, I understand the concept, 
But how can the capital finance that up front if the cities aren't made to pay? How do you make sure people don't simply use the more convenient route once they're outside the cities? The idea has so many flaws that I don't even know where to start. Give me 10 minutes, please. Not wanting to deal with any more of the tedious explanation part, she simply opened a portal behind her chair, stood up, and disappeared through it. E.E.H.? Afterward, the remaining group, mostly Anna and Ari, were busy calming down the mayor before Sophia returned. Chapter 043, The Eccentrics Plan Sophia and the others met the mayor of Sava and began to explain the plan travel and transportation changes between selected cities and the capital to her. Even though the blonde's explanation skills were as outstanding as always, she still had difficulties explaining the plan to her. Because of that, she decided to get help, created a portal, and disappeared through it for a couple of minutes. As Sophia? Back in the capital, Menzer was currently having a meeting with a few of his ministers when an uninvited guest suddenly stormed their meeting room. What are you doing here? It's almost been a month since you left. Really? The blonde tilted her head. Wow, my sense of time is almost as bad as my sense of direction. I could have sworn it was a week or two at best. No, it's been close to fours. He lightly shook her head. Again, what are you doing here? Also, as you can see, we're in the middle of something here. He pointed at the ministers around him. I would appreciate it if you don't suddenly barge into my meetings. I'm busy, too, you know. She started pouting. We've arrived in, in, uh. We've arrived in a city that was on the list you gave me. Sophia gave up on trying to remember the name. You know, the cities where a portal would be nice. Oh, is that so? The king's interest was piqued. Did you offer them a portal connection? That's why I'm here. The blonde scratched her cheek. I've run into a bit of an issue. Hmm? I remembered that I really hate explaining things. That is not new to me or anyone in this room. Menzer then glanced at his ministers, who all nodded in unison. And because of that, I need to borrow you for about half an hour. For what exactly? Not only am I not good at explanation, I also don't want to deal with them. She shook her head a few times. Because of that, I decided that our dear king will do the explaining for the mayors of the cities we visit. Menzer stared at her for a moment. Why exactly did I not see this coming? He sounded disappointed in himself. I don't know? The blonde shrugged. The others knew immediately before I even finished telling them my plan. Well, everyone in your group is about as eccentric as you are, so it's not surprising you think alike. Ah. She didn't appreciate being called eccentric by yet another person. Also, your daughter is part of my group, that's how I know. Sophia paused for a moment. I did not remember our king to be this sassy. She looked at the ministers behind him. When he's right, he's right. They all just nodded. Hey. Menzer glared at them. You're speaking about my daughter here. They immediately went silent. Anyway, let's go. The blonde pointed at the king. We have a meeting to attend. Also, before you start complaining, you have two options here. One, you come with me and explain it to the mayor. Two, that city isn't going to get a portal. Neither is any other city where you aren't going to cooperate. Ha, huh, he massaged his temples. I guess I don't really have a choice here, huh? Menzer then faced his ministers again. Let's reschedule this to tomorrow, okay? Yes. They nodded. Once he was done with his current meeting, Menzer followed Sophia to attend another slightly unexpected one. I wonder if I ever get used to this. The king lightly shook himself after coming out of the portal. Oh, Mayor Vess, long time no see. He noticed the girl with the dumbfounded expression. Does that mean we're in Sava? Probably. Sophia shrugged as she had given up on remembering names for the time being. Father. Seeing him, Anna directly ran up to him and hugged her father. I missed you, too. Menzer quickly hugged her back. Ah. The blonde liked that. They love each other, even though he calls her eccentric and all that. 
Huh? Hearing that, Anna let go of him. Hey! Menzer glared at Sophia. Why your majesty? Luckily, Vess stopped being flabbergasted and saved him from the wrath of his daughter. How? Why? What? It's quite overwhelming, I know. The king sympathized with her. Explaining this situation will take a while, so how about we sit down? Doing just that, everyone got comfortable on their chairs again before Menzer began to tell the mayor of Sava what was going on right now. So, Vess scratched the side of her head while looking more confused than ever. You're telling me that the capital invented a magic that makes it possible to travel between places instantly? I've seen it with my own eyes, but I still can't believe it. In the first place, not only does it seem to be chantless magic, but it also seems to be uncategorized. That should have been nothing more than a fable. Ah, right, Sophia rolled her eyes. I forgot that most people still believe in magic being insanely limited and reduced to a few elements at once. She then looked tired after remembering how most approached magic in such a boring and unenthusiastic way that they thought it was only possible to use one or two elements like fire or air at best. Our views on magic have greatly changed in the past year. He took a short glance at the blonde, the reason for said change, before continuing. Our scholars are currently in the middle of writing down the new teachings, before distributing them throughout the kingdom. The portals will immensely help with that, too. He then looked at the shorter tiger once more. Also, unfortunately, it wasn't anyone directly in the capital who invented them. It's our Sophia here who came up with them. I'm also the only one who can use them. The blonde suddenly sounded a bit more serious. Menzer will tell you the rules later, but those portals run on a strict no-strikes policy. Trying even one shady thing with them means they're gone, and trust me, I'll know even without being nearby. Yes. The king nodded. Every city participating in the network will have to sign a very detailed contract explaining all the details. Furthermore, the capital will serve as a central point, and no direct portals between cities will exist. That way, we can perfectly monitor all activities from there. We'll be running on even stricter rules to prevent Sophia from shutting us down. This is way too important to treat it lightly. I'm glad you understand. She smiled at him, before facing the mayor again. Do you see now why the initial costs are of no concern? It's because there are none. The tolls are mainly there for the upkeep, like the bureaucracy, supervision, and management. Obviously, that also includes my cut for inventing and installing them in various cities. My pension is secured. W.O. Vess wasn't sure what to say. J. Just who are you? I'd love to know that myself. Menzer nodded a few times, while both stared at the short tiger. Me? She pointed at herself. I'm just an eccentric girl with too many ideas and a vivid imagination. The two went silent after noticing the blonde was still upset over having been called eccentric by them. Anyway, dot. Sophia's mood returned to normal as she decided to change the topic while addressing the king. Is the portal building outside the capital finished already? Of course not. He shook his head. You don't construct a building that size in a mere month. It will take many more. I see. She scratched her cheek. I never really understood why you're building a new place outside the capital walls anyway. I'm sure there's something like a warehouse that could have been used instead, no? A warehouse is no place for something of such importance. He shook his head. This will be the first thing the entire kingdom will see when using the portals and arriving in the capital. It has to look the part. I guess that's fair. The blonde nodded. I also like to make the places I stay in look nice and cute, so it makes sense. The biggest reason for it to be outside the walls of the capital is the security side of it, though. Obviously, the king didn't just think about the style of the project. The hub will connect to many dozen cities once it's fully operational. It's way too much of a risk to give all of them immediate access to the inside parts of the capital. We're not worried about internal strife, though that has to be considered, too, but what if a city gets attacked and overrun? 
The attackers or monsters could breach our entire security and destroy the capital from the inside before we could react. Outside the wall, we have at least some time to react, to close the gates and ready our standing army. Clever. Sophia seemed impressed by his forward thinking. By the way, I can configure my portals and limit the individuals that go through. I can block monsters, non-beast folk, or people with obvious malicious intent from using the portals. And you didn't think this detail was worth mentioning beforehand? The king got a little loud, oops, dot. She didn't feel the slightest bit sorry about it. W well, there's always the chance that someone's capable of hiding their intent. It also makes more sense for the hub to be outside from a logistical side, so it's still the best way to do it. Afterward, Menzer needed a bit of a break to get over the eccentric girl's antics. He also had to go into more detail about the project for Vess, because the poor mayor hadn't been able to follow them in the slightest. Chapter 044, Misplacement Sophia made a quick trip to the capital to collect the king because she didn't want to bother explaining the portal plan to the mayor of the city they were currently in herself. Naturally, things still took quite a while as it was far from an easy topic especially because Vess, the mayor, still needed to learn about the advanced magic the blonde and the others had introduced to the capital. Wow, that took a lot longer than I had thought. The group was back on the streets when Sophia let out a sigh. Really? Maya tilted her head. I was expecting for it to take the entire day. At the very least. Ari nodded a few times. Well, fair enough. The blonde couldn't argue against that in the end. Too bad the portal hub in the capital isn't done yet. That means I have to return here once they finish it. For now, I just put it underground here and in the capital. It will take you a grand total of seven minutes to do that. The jaguar rolled her eyes. I'm sure you'll be able to pull through with it. Barely. As usual, she couldn't do without complaining. By the way, we've been walking around now for a little while and while the city is quite pretty, it looks exactly like a smaller part of the capital. Nothing new or exciting, I mean. How about we get something to eat and then get going? Sounds good. Steph nodded. Traveling is more fun, dot. Yeah. The others also agreed. Afterward, the group briefly looked for a nice-looking restaurant to eat something together before leaving the city, as there was nothing of interest to do. They traveled for about an hour but as the meeting with the mayor had taken quite a while, it was already getting dark, and they decided to return to Sophia's domain. All right, let's go and start the bioluminescence biome. Back in the cottage, Steph was still full of energy and wanted to start the project they came up with two weeks ago. Oh. Maya liked the idea because she also wanted to play around with it back then. Hmm, the blonde tilted her head. I mean, it's still kinda early, and we've already eaten, so we might as well play around some more. Let's go. And so, before getting comfortable, the group decided to immediately head out again. Alrighty, this way. Outside the cottage, Sophia opened another one of her portals. I placed the samples from the hot springs forest there. Perfect. Highly motivated, Steph was the first to step through it before everyone else followed after her. Uh. You sure about that? On the other side, Maya tilted her head while looking around. All there was, was the endless white void of her standard domain. Yeah? Sophia looked the most surprised. I am 100% certain I had put it here. Well, it's not a surprise that your sudden surge in navigation abilities was just a fluke. Maya didn't sound surprised. Be it your domain or not. You having no sense of direction even here makes much more sense. True. Everyone besides the blonde agreed with the cat girl. Hey. She didn't like that. Wait a moment. Sophia then looked into the distance to her right. A moment later, she was gone. Huh? The others hadn't seen that one coming. Instantly after disappearing, the blonde arrived in another part of her domain. However, the new area had nothing with the previous all-white nothingness in common. What happened here? She found herself inside a massive forest she hadn't seen before. It was far from a regular forest, as well. The place was littered with very old-looking trees covered in moss and vines, 
while the entire area felt very moist with an incredibly high humidity. Mushrooms had grown everywhere, as well. Not to mention that they came in all sorts of healthy and unhealthy colors, and some of them were even taller than Sophia. All of this wasn't the most striking in the forest, though. Half of the trees, moss, vines, and mushrooms were glowing in a pale blue light that illuminated the entire area and gave it a slightly eerie but fascinating feeling. A few moments after her arrival and taking in all the sights, the blonde was suddenly swarmed by countless pink and purple magic particles that started swirling around her while it seemed like they were even more active than usual. Oh? Sophia curiously watched them dancing around for a little bit. You seem quite excited. Did you all make this forest? She took a wild guess. Hearing that, the particles increased the speed at which they were moving around the tiger. I guess that's a yes, huh? Being happy they were understood, the ambient magic left inside the forest also swarmed the tiger. Wait a moment. It seemed like she noticed something. Does that mean you all stole the swampy biome sample from the place I put it? Instantly after, every single pink and purple particle in the air froze as they got caught. A moment later, a part of the particles left Sophia and covered a small area of the forest that looked relatively normal. Then, that area disappeared, leaving behind a small hole. Did you just return it to where I had initially put it? Sophia tried to guess what they were doing as she watched the particles without interrupting. After they were done, the magic returned to the blonde while moving up and down a few times. I guess that means the others will have something to play with before I return, huh? Good. It seemed like she first wanted to spend some more time in the forest. How did you all even do that in the first place? Trying to answer her question, some of the magic particles formed into a big ball while swirling around before suddenly jumping around two meters to the side. Ah, you just took it and put it somewhere else, huh? Hearing her guess, the magic stopped their act and returned to swirling around the blonde. Haha, <laughs> just like that? How fun, Dot. She liked how carefree they were. You still should have said something, though. I kinda embarrassed myself earlier when I wanted to show the samples to the others, and nothing was there. Learning that they caused trouble for her, the particles stopped moving once more. They'd become noticeably less sparkly, as well. H. Hey. There's no need to get depressed over that. She immediately felt guilty. I told you that you can do whatever you want in my domain, so it's totally alright. Glowy spooky forest sounded like a fun idea, so you wanted to play with it, right? Seemingly relieved about that, the particles perked up again and happily circled around the blonde for a little bit while also playfully hitting her with light wind gusts. Still, why didn't any of you tell me and simply took it to a different place? The pink and purple magic took a bit of a distance from the blonde and then started darting all over the place in an uncoordinated way before suddenly hitting Sophia with a gust of wind so hard it swept her off her feet, and she landed butt first on the ground. Hey! Don't surprise me like that. She wasn't a fan of that. The particles then also immediately swarmed her once more and it seemed like they were trying to help her up, too. Oh, wait, is that what it was? You wanted it to be a surprise for me? In response to that, the particles started jumping up and down once Sophia was back on her feet again. I see. She looked quite happy about that. Thank you. I wasn't expecting that, but I love it. It turned out super well, too. Maya and the others will have to try really hard to do something nearly as impressive. Dot. Delighted by the praise, the ambient magic around the tiger looked like it started dancing again. Hee <laughs> hee. The blonde watched them for a little while, with a big smile on her lips. For the future, though, whenever I bring new samples into the domain, and you see something interesting, could you leave something for us to play with, too? My other friends also love creating stuff and I want everyone to have fun in here. The particles stopped their dance momentarily to move up and down, before returning to their previous rhythmic movements. Thank you. She was glad they understood. Afterward, the blonde stayed for a little longer and chatted some more with magic before she eventually decided to return to the others she had left earlier to search for the biome sample. Where have you been? 
Back with the group, Sophia was immediately greeted by Maya. You were gone for like half an hour. Ah, she scratched her cheek in return. I went to look for the swampy sample we had gathered back then. She pointed at the few mossy trees and mushrooms that were now behind them. Once I found it, I tried to understand why it happened. Turns out domains are a little more complicated than I had previously anticipated, I guess. As usual, Sophia kept those things vague. It shouldn't happen anymore from now on. I see. Anyway, let's go. It seems like Steph had gotten even more impatient while her sister was gone, because she was already circling the samples with an expression showing that she was raring to go and play with it. There was no need to wait for me, you know? See. The dog girl raised her voice. I told you we didn't have to wait. Ahaha, uh -huh, the others weren't sure how to react to that. Once all that was taken care of, the group started building with the swampy biome sample while Sophia was secretly cheering them on to match and surpass Magic, who had done the same in a different corner of her domain. Chapter 045, Hills Having left the first city, the group visited since leaving the capital and traveling for a little longer, they decide to spend the rest of their day as usual in Sophia's domain. Inside, things were a little confusing, though. The swampy biome samples they had collected before were gone, and the blonde had to search for them. As it turned out, Magic had borrowed them to create a massive bioluminescent forest in the middle of nowhere. Sophia naturally was rather surprised by that, but she was also happy that the playful pink and purple particles were having fun in her place. Wait a moment. The group returned to the regular world the day after they played around with the biome sample when Sophia suddenly stopped walking while having a shocked expression. Stop that. Maya reacted purely on instinct. What she said. Ari felt the same. Shush, it's no premonition this time. The blonde glared at the duo. In that city with the mayor, Menzer mentioned that it has already been a month since we left the capital. We went traveling in April, so it's May already. You should become a detective. Fen rolled his eyes. Your deductive skills are second to none. Oy. She didn't appreciate this kind of sass, either. Anna. Ellie's birthday is in May, right? If I missed it, I'm going to level a country. Calm down. The princess of the country they were in right now, didn't like the sound of that. It won't be this country, don't worry. That's only marginally better. Anna still was a little relieved, though. Ellie's birthday is at the end of the month, so we still have around two weeks left. Phew. The blonde looked visibly relieved. That would have been the worst. Also, I need to get a present, too. I'm pretty sure she'll be happy enough just seeing you. Ari didn't think she had to put overly much effort into it. Still. Sophia wanted to give her something. Maya, let's make a quick trip to the capital next week to look for a present. Sure. Maya happily agreed with her plan, because she loved Ellie just as much. By the way, while talking about the little princess, Steph started looking around before facing Chloe. Have Mira and Faye mentioned when they'll be back? They haven't. She shook her head in return. Not that it's overly rare for the two to disappear for a week or two. That's true. The dog girl nodded. I wonder what they're up to. I don't. Chloe still didn't feel like wanting to know what her mothers did in their alone time. He he dot. She liked her reaction. Alrighty, let's keep traveling until it's time for the little one's birthday. Anna, are there any other cities from the King's List nearby we should go to first? Not really. She shook her head. I took a look at it before, and the next cities are all at least one or two months away. The directions don't matter, either because there will be one wherever we head towards. The burden of choice. I love it. As usual, it was quite hard to dampen Steph's mood. Also, the princess wasn't done yet. Father mentioned that completing the portal hub building will take a good while longer. Visiting too many cities might actually be a problem. I could still give the cities a deactivated portal and activate the capital side once the building is ready. It wasn't really an issue for the blonde. Well, we could do that, but. 
I was going to suggest to just head in whatever direction for now, while not caring about the cities. That way. Hearing that, Steph immediately pointed to her left. Let's go. I fully support this. As this was what Anna really wanted, she instantly agreed with the dog girl. Let's see some stuff. I like that one better. Sophia immediately disregarded her suggestion, for their clearly superior one. Yep, that sounds a lot more fun. Maya, too, sided with them. I guess that's the best course of action right now. Ari also felt similarly. Though, I am a little concerned that Faye isn't with us right now to deal with whatever ridiculous thing you all will come up with. Then again, it's better now when there's no city around us rather than when there are people. That's the spirit. Energetically raising her hand, Steph then began walking in the direction she had pointed before. Maya, which cardinal direction is that? Sophia had a bad feeling about the route her sister had chosen. West. She paused for a moment to orientate herself better. Well, west-ish. West is okay. I feared that she was leading us north towards the cold. Ah. The dog girl stopped moving. I forgot about that. Let's go. Not giving her any time to change her mind, the blonde caught up to her sister, grabbed her hand, and continued walking in the direction Steph had suggested. Well, I guess it's fine, Dot. She wasn't overly upset about it. Exploring is exploring. Oh, that's a new one. The group kept walking for around two hours when a massive mountain range was slowly coming into view, which caused Sophia's eyes to sparkle. Most of the kingdom, all the way back to and including the monster country, was relatively flat, after all. In fact, Anna had the biggest hills wherever we went. You're the best. Maya and Steph loved her for the comparison. Why did you have to bring me into this? The princess didn't like that and quickly covered her chest with her arms. She does have a point, though. Even Ari sided with the blonde. Your hills were, in fact, the biggest around up until now. Hey! Anna glared at her girlfriend. Also, that's simply not true. Compared to basically all the girls from the cow tribe, I'm average at the very best. Fair point. The jaguar nodded. I take back my words. Those girls are great, Dot. Maya suddenly had a wide grin on her face. Personally, they are a bit too much for my taste. The voices of Sophia and Chloe overlapped perfectly. I can see why they're popular, though. The duo had the same feelings on them. More than a bit, actually. They fit the fox's taste even less. Hold on a moment. Steph seemed to have some issues with the current topic. You're telling me that there are big-breasted cowgirls and no one had the courtesy to tell me? Oops, I guess I forgot. The short tiger just shrugged. I only met a few myself and didn't know any of them well enough to introduce them. Together with the part where they aren't my type. Yep. Chloe nodded a few times. Also, I had a hunch that you'd react to them like that, so I had one more reason to stay silent on top of that. I hate you all. The dog girl was not happy about that. The girls are horny again, huh? The wolves were lagging a little behind the others when Aura just had to make a comment. What do you mean? Again? Fen tilted his head. Where was I the only time they weren't horny about something and or someone? Good point. The female wolf had to give it to him. Anyway. Sophia, the least horny member of the girls, decided that it was time to change the topic back to the initial topic, ignoring the fact that she started it all, which may or may not made her title slightly debatable in this instance. Mountain range. Let's go. Let's go. Her sister probably was okay talking about the cowgirls for a lot longer, but exploring is even more important to her than that, so she wasn't the slightest bit against the idea. On that much more enjoyable note, Anna was the happiest over the change of topic. I think there will be many mountains from now on. The kingdom's geography will change towards that and stay like it for quite a while if we keep heading in this direction. There are some really high mountains in that range, if I remember right, as well. Ari added some details to the geography lesson. Sounds great. 
Sophia was looking forward to it. I've never climbed an actual mountain before. Really? The jaguar looked surprised. I wasn't expecting that. Huh? The blonde tilted her head. Why is it surprising that I want to climb a mountain? The part where it's May, and the higher we go, the colder it will get. She looked right at the short tiger. I'm fairly sure many of the mountains will still have a layer of snow. In fact, if I remember the geography lessons right, some mountains in the area are so high that they're covered in snow all year round. Ah. Sophia froze up. So, about that idea of going north, how about we give that a try, after all? I'm sure the northern part of the country is lovely. Let's go. Chloe and Steph appeared left and right of her, grabbed the blonde's hands, and started dragging her toward the direction of the mountain range. N-O-O. The cold-hating striped cat really didn't want to go there anymore. Unfortunately, the cold-loving couple didn't care about that. Also, that very duo, ignoring the wolves, who very obviously didn't want to get involved, were the strongest in the group after Sophia, so she actually would need to put in some effort into beating them, too. Unless she would remember to stop time, of course. And, if there's one thing she hates more than the cold, it's dealing with bothersome things that need effort to solve. Also, the short tiger still wanted to climb a mountain regardless of all that. In the end, she decided to go along with it. Although, she obviously never stopped complaining once on the way. There are few more things she likes more than complaining, after all. Chapter 046, Mountain Range While they were out exploring in the regular world, the group spotted a massive mountain range in the distance. At first, Sophia was really excited about that because she had never climbed a tall mountain. Still, after Ari notified her about the part where it was going to be quite cold there, her motivation had lowered significantly. Steph and Chloe only loved the plan even more because of that, though, and the group decided to head towards the mountain anyway. Does anyone know how cold the top of a mountain can get? As they were getting closer to them, Sophia was starting to get a little nervous. They had spent another night in the blonde's domain right before they reached the beginning of the mountain range. Well, cold enough for snow to stick, so, Ari, too, didn't sound the happiest about it. Very, I assume. Oh, no. The blonde hated to hear it. Oh, yes. Steph and Chloe loved it, though. I guess it's time to pack out my warming magic again, to heat up the surroundings. I hope that I wouldn't have to use it before next winter, but dire times call for extreme measures. Thank you very much. Maya, Ari, and Anna seemed very grateful about her plan. Stupid cats. Steph rolled her eyes. Chloe, let's make sure to always be ahead of them to avoid getting caught up in that. Good idea. The pink fox nodded. I want to enjoy the nice cold. Let's go. Doing as suggested, the dog girl grabbed Chloe's hand, and the two dashed ahead. I'm tired. Sophia hung her head. And it's only morning. Yeah. The other cats agreed with her. Still, after letting out a few more sighs, they followed after the energetic couple together, with the wolves behind them. I, I think I see something white up there. The group arrived at the foot of the first tree when the blonde noticed something alarming when she looked up. The day just keeps getting better and better. The little sister was way more enthusiastic about the sight. Now that we're a little closer, it's much steeper than I had thought. Chloe also sounded somewhat uneasy, though for a different reason. This is going to be challenging, isn't it? By that, I mean exhausting, right? One of the few good things about this. The pros and cons list of Sophia and the Fox was the exact same, just with the header being swapped. Stop whining, you too. As Steph loved both those aspects, working out and being in a cold area, she couldn't be happier and had no compassion for the duo. Also, sis, I've spotted some bushes and other vegetation I'd like for my biome project. The higher parts of the mountain work perfectly for the theme I'm going for. Sure, we can borrow some samples. Yay! In fact, I'd like the whole mountain for my domain. The short tiger scratched her cheek for looking up. There are no hills whatsoever in my place yet, and I'd love to change that. That sounds so fun. 
Naturally, the dog girl was a supporter of such a ridiculous suggestion. Can you portal a whole mountain into your domain? If I should, is the question here. I'm pretty sure it's just using enough authority to increase the size. Borrowing a mountain seems a bit excessive, no? No one will notice a few missing trees or bushes we borrowed, but a whole mountain is something else. Ignoring even the reactions of possible witnesses, the area here is quite beautiful, so rescuing this mountain would be rather detrimental to the property value. I see. Steph nodded a few times. Oh, dearest princess of this nation, how do you feel about liberating this mountain? Anna paused for a moment. You're talking about stealing it, right? We would never. The sister sounded offended. Just because you call it borrowing, rescuing, or even liberating, the meaning is all the same. How do you even rescue a mountain? From what? Rescue it from its static position it has been in for eons? Sophia tilted her head. A mountain has to stretch its legs once in a while. The liberating feeling of being able to move after millions or so of years. What legs? Ari raised her voice. You too, Anna had no words. Does it have to be that mountain? She pointed at the one right in front of him. The mountain range around here is pretty well known, and father's head would probably explode hearing that a part of it was rescued. The tall tiger decided to go along with it. Ah. The sisters hung their heads. It's quite an extensive mountain range, though. As far as I know, it isn't fully mapped, either. The inner parts are supposedly quite hard to traverse, and no one really knows how it looks there. You can liberate one of those mountains if that makes it any better. Well, if we get to them, at least. The princess found a compromise. Let's go. More motivated than ever, the sisters energetically raised their arms before starting the ascent of the mountain in front of them. Sophia also had completely forgotten about the cold issue. It really is getting pretty steep, huh? The group was leisurely ascending the mountain for around half an hour when Ari started to notice that it was becoming a lot more tiring going up. Yes. Chloe heavily agreed with her. My body's not flexible enough for such a climb. Not only that, but it has become noticeably colder, too. Anna also felt like complaining. I mean, I agree with the last thing, but get a grip, you three. Sophia did not share most of their whining. Even that is not worth complaining over. Steph lightly glared at her sister before focusing on the sluggish trio. Seriously, we've been walking every day for the past month or even more, how are you three still this inflexible? To be fair, Ari felt the need to defend herself. I think walking and running around is good cardio and gives you more stamina, but it doesn't make you any more flexible. That's not wrong, but you three don't have any outstanding stamina, either. The jaguar had nothing to defend herself with anymore. Maybe we should introduce some yoga to our daily routine? That could maybe help. Steph threw a random idea into the mix. Oh. The blonde seemed to like the suggestion. That sounds great. What's, yoga? Maya tilted her head. Ah. Sophia noticed that it may haven't existed in their new world yet. It's, uh, a fancy way of stretching? You just offended every single person in existence that practices yoga, ever. The dog girl rolled her eyes. Do you have a better explanation? Steph went silent. Okay, I also never got into the spiritual side of it, but it also helps you relax. Admittedly, I also was mostly talking about the exercise part. She scratched her cheek. It comes with many different poses to stretch and move your body of varying difficulty. It helps a lot in terms of making your body move the way you want it to. It really makes you flexible in all sorts of places when you do it enough, dot. Kinky implications aside, I fully agree. Sophia knew what kind of flexibility Steph was talking about there towards the end. I used to do it all the time in the old world as a warm-up for my running or to wind down in the evening. I often joined for the evening sessions. Steph smiled at her sister. I think I loosely remember yoga from my previous run before respawning. Chloe's wording for her life on Earth, before she died there, was rather interesting. I never got to try it, but it looked quite interesting. I'd love to try it. 
Maya and the royal couple also wanted to try it, so everyone decided to have a yoga lesson together the next time they got the chance. Afterward, they tackled some more of the mountain. Oh. The group continued for another hour and got reasonably high on the mountain. High enough that they had already passed the tree line when Sophia suddenly noticed something new ahead of them. A cave. She pointed at an entrance in the side of the mountain leading into it, before eventually turning dark enough to hide any detail inside. I love caves. Chloe got very excited over the sighting. Let's explore it. Be but. Steph pointed further up the mountain. We're so close to the snowy part already. But there's a cave. Sophia and the pink fox unionized. Why are you siding with her? The dog girl stared at her girlfriend. You love snow even more than I do. Because, again, it's a cave. Ugh, she hung her head. I hate it even more that I understand the reasoning. What to do? Cave. Maya, the royal couple, and the wolves also decided against the snow. I guess I can't fight against the entire group. Steph gave up. Though, I think some decisions were also based on not having to climb the mountain any longer and relax their legs a little, rather than the exploring part. Chloe, Anna, and Ari awkwardly turned their heads to the side to break eye contact. Well, caves are indeed great, so I can't complain too much. The dog girl wasn't actually upset. Also, the moment we're done exploring and out again, to the summit we go. She had no intention of giving up on that. Sure. Sophia smiled at her. I dread the snow, and I'm not the slightest bit looking forward to it, but I want to be able to say that I climbed a massive mountain. Not to mention that we'll probably get a good look over which mountain to rescue from there, too. That's the spirit. Steph was happy with that reply. Once they had decided on their next steps, the group got closer to the cave they found to see inside and explore it. Chapter 047, Tunnel during the group's ascend up the mountain they found, Sophia came across a cave leading into it, and so everyone decided to take a break from climbing in favor of exploring the cave. Steph was a little reluctant because she was looking forward to the snowy peak, but she couldn't fight against the allure of something unknown, either. Whoa, it's gotten dark quite fast in here, huh? Sophia looked around in the cave while squinting her slightly glowing eyes that were reflecting the little light left. I can't see more than like 50 meters ahead. That's way more than I do. Steph looked a little envious. It's more like 15 at best. Also, your eyes look so cool, sis. He he dot. She liked the compliment, and envy in her voice. But your eyes are also kinda glowy, so they're definitely better than human ones in that regard. It would probably be pitch black for our old selves already. True. Speaking of, the blonde then looked at Chloe. You're a fox, so a canine, same family as Steph and our wolves, but your eyes are more similar to the rest of us cats. They glow stronger than theirs, too. How good is your night vision? I can see further than 15 meters, but it's not 50. Though, it's probably closer to yours than Steph's. 35, maybe 40? She also squinted her eyes a little. Real cats still are a level higher in that regard, I'd say. I see. Sophia nodded a few times. Being part animal, sure is fascinating. Exciting, too. Steph agreed with her sister. Also slightly weird when applying old world logic, but they just don't know what's good. It probably will only get darker, and soon no one can see anything anymore. The blonde tried to concentrate on the deeper parts of the cave in front of them. I think it's time to add some light ourselves. Steph, do the honors, please. Sure thing. Nodding once, the dog girl closed her eyes for a moment. A moment later, dim orbs of light appeared inside the cave and lightly illuminated the surrounding area. I decided to go for a moody setting. A brightly lit cave sounds weird. Good thinking. Sophia agreed with her decision. I wonder where this leads to. Now that they were able to see much further in, Maya was trying to find out what was in front of them. Rather than a cave, it looks more like a tunnel to me, though. 
With the better lighting, she noticed that the cave was the same width and height the entire way across and looked fairly even and straight shortly after the entrance. It actually looks more like it has been made rather than having naturally formed. Who or what could dig through a mountain? Ari didn't like the sound of that. I could. Me, too. Me, three. Sophia, Chloe, and Steph smiled at her. I made several very similar tunnels in the past. Through mountains, too. Same. The wolves even had practical experience already. I hate this group. The jaguar forgot for a moment who she was traveling with. Also, the blonde wasn't done yet. I'll have to remind you that we did this very thing around two weeks ago when we found the underground hot springs. Sure, that wasn't a mountain, but it was still pure stone once we got deeper. Ah, right, she paused for a moment to collect herself. Wait. It only made her more concerned. That means that someone else as ridiculous as this group would be nearby. Only one way to find out. Sounding very enthusiastic about it, Steph pointed further into the tunnel. Let's go. Wait. Ari didn't share the sentiment. Let's talk this out a little more. Don't worry, Sophia smiled at the jaguar. I can't sense any powerful being outside our group in my entire detection range. Ah. Uh. Her little sister seemed disappointed about it. Thank you so much for having such a useful skill. The black-haired girl was really happy about it, though. Also, Finn approached the tunnel wall and inspected it. I seriously doubt this cave has been created recently. While it clearly has been made by someone or something, the elements have strongly worn down the walls. For the erosion to reach the current level, many years have to go by. Way more than any of you are old. He took a quick glance at everyone except Aura. Who or whatever this did is long gone. But why would you carve a tunnel through a mountain and just leave? Ari was still confused. I did it all the time. The male wolf sounded a little smug. I love digging, and sometimes, going through a mountain is easier than going above it. Honestly, I was going to suggest tunneling through it before, as well. I really didn't want to deal with the snow but I just knew Steph wouldn't let me. Also, climbing sounded fun. I'm glad you know me so well, sis. The dog girl gave Sophia a thumbs up in response. Yeah, now that I think about it, it does suit the two of you, going for the most complicated and ridiculous way to solve a problem. The jaguar rolled her eyes while looking in the direction of the shorter tiger and fan. Hee <laughs> hee. They took it as a compliment. Well, all that aside, it's very reassuring that we're alone around here. Ari was relieved about that part. I guess it's very unlikely to meet anyone as ridiculous as this group out of nowhere, huh? Way to jinx it. Maya just had to make that comment. Ah. A bit of color left her face. I can't wait to meet new friends. As usual, Steph got along great with the cat girl. S stop it. Ari only panicked more. It's highly unlikely. Finn sounded a little more serious. It would be an outright miracle to meet someone else with our magic levels. For some reason, he had to put extra emphasis on the miracle part. I hate all of you. Having had enough of being teased by them, the jaguar walked past everyone and journeyed deeper into the cave. That's the spirit. The dog girl ran after her because she was eager to explore. Oh? Roughly twenty minutes after the group continued walking, Sophia noticed something further down the tunnel. I can see a light. Have we reached the other side of the mountain? Really? It doesn't really feel like a light to me. Maya squinted her eyes to focus on what the blonde was pointing at. It doesn't seem overly bright, and it just looks too, uh, white to me. We've also been going uphill, the entire time in the tunnel. I think it's actually. Snow. Steph came to that conclusion first and immediately sprinted towards it. It is. There, she jumped headfirst into it with such force that only her lower legs and feet ended up being visible. Someone really missed the snow, huh? The cat girl wasn't sure what else to say. Wait for me. Chloe ran after her girlfriend because the Arctic fox also was a big fan of the cold white in front of them. 
She opted against jumping headfirst into it and just pushed her arms up to her elbows into it, though. I missed this fluffy coldness. I don't think I've ever heard someone calling snow fluffy coldness. Ari had conflicting feelings about that. A nightmare, sure, but not that. After all, she wasn't a fan of it. Is it just me, or is Steph's animal side extra strong? She's more dog than actual dogs I know. Sophia stared at the girl, or rather where she had last been because Steph had fully dug herself into the snow and was nowhere to be seen anymore. It's interesting you're the one saying that. Anna stared at her. I know about 100 members of the tiger family by name, and you're more tiger than any of them. You're way more instinct-driven, not to mention that those instincts seem way stronger in you, too. You're also more cat than any cats I know. Maya sided with the princess. And I'd know, I am one, after all. Aya. The blonde turned her head away. Stupid instincts. I really overdid it when I transformed into my tiger self. Well, it explains why Steph is the same then. Yep, both sisters have no clue about the concept of holding back. Maya nodded a few times. Anyway. Sophia decided that she didn't want to be the topic any longer. What are we going to do about this, in Ari's very fitting words, nightmare? She then pointed at the snow. I've rekindled my passion for fire. The cat girl smiled at her. That will take care of this really quick. Rekindled, huh? The jaguar lightly rolled her eyes. That wasn't even on purpose. Short dot. Ari didn't believe her. Ugh. She wasn't the biggest fan of being on the receiving end of the sass. Whatever, how about it? The cat girl faced Sophia again. Sure thing. She nodded. The sooner we get rid of the snow, the better. All right. Don't you want to get your sister out before that? Anna felt like they had forgotten about something when she looked at the cat girl who had literal flames in her eyes as she was raring to go. She's pretty fire resistant, it should be fine. The older sister didn't see an issue with the plan. Also, if we pull her out first, there's a 200% chance that she'll be complaining about our plan of melting the snow. But the princess wasn't entirely convinced. Let's go. Maya rolled up her sleeves and walked closer to the snow because she had no intention of being stopped by Anna, who could just watch her clearing the path out of the cave. A few minutes later, actual light from the outside illuminated the tunnel once again after the massive fireball had lost its power and revealed the exit. Chapter 048 Snow the cave the group found on the side of the mountain they were climbing turned out to be a tunnel that led them to the other side of the mountain. Unfortunately, it was blocked by snow, but Maya's love for fire-based magic dealt with that in a matter of seconds. You are by far the worst person in existence. The group was still near the exit of the tunnel and had currently gathered around a big campfire where Steph was glaring daggers at Maya. Wow, she really is fire-resistant. Anna stared at the dog girl with an amazed expression. Steph was completely soaked and had stripped down to her underwear while her clothes were drying close to the flames, but she looked completely unhurt after Maya had used fire magic to melt the snow she was in earlier. Not even a strand of her hair was burned. Aren't you cold? Ari also looked amazed while she looked at the almost naked girl, only wearing a matching set of a black bra and panties, but for a very different reason. I'm shivering over here just looking at you. Not at all, Dot. Steph smiled at her. If it weren't for restrictions and morals placed on us by society, I could run around like that all day. Even less than that would be fine by me. Even in the snow? Especially in the snow, Dot. Wow. The jaguar didn't know what else to say. Right now, I would even be okay being trapped in a glacier. My burning rage for Maya would keep me warm there, too. She returned to glaring at the cat girl. My love for you burns passionately, too. Dot. Maya smiled back at her. Come on, you would have done exactly the same in my position. Steph went silent for a moment. Fair enough. Her raging fire was immediately extinguished. That easy? The princess couldn't believe it. When she's right, she's right. The dog girl just shrugged. By the way, again, shouldn't I just dry you and your clothes with air magic, and we're good to go? 
Sophia joined the conversation. I told you earlier already, but you simply continued to strip out of your wet clothes. Because I have no issues with stripping. Nothing to hide in this group, dot. Steph then smiled at her sister. Also, getting soaked and making a campfire to dry yourself and your clothes is such a fun mood I can't miss out on. Magic is amazing, but it makes some things too easy. If you say so. The blonde had no intentions of stopping her. I do get that, though. Sometimes, I also like to do something myself instead of letting magic take care of it. Anyway, we're good, right? Maya wanted to make sure, after all, and faced the dog girl once more. Sure. She just nodded. Afterward, once her clothes were fully dried, Steph put something on again, and the group decided to continue their exploration of the mountain range. Oi. Now we're good. Dot. They managed to take exactly three steps when Steph decided that it was time for revenge. Spotting a massive pile of snow right next to them, she got behind Maya and instantly pushed her into it. It also was the soft and powdery type of snow, so the cat girl sunk completely into it before jumping out of it again around half a second later. What do you mean we're good? Once she was out of the snow, the cat girl immediately glared at her. I only used flames earlier, because I know that you're fire resistant. I'm not the slightest bit snow resistant, though. Are you seriously comparing snow with actual fire? The dog girl couldn't believe her. No, she's got a point. Ari, Anna, and Sophia sided with Maya. I don't accept complaints from the cat faction on the matter. By the way, how did you become fire resistant in the first place? As Fen wasn't interested in their fight, he changed the topic to something that did catch his attention. That seems like a very handy feature I'd very much like to have, too. It just naturally happened during my magic training with Faye. The dog girl actually acknowledged having that feature. I'm sure she'll let you join our next lesson. Ah, uh, ah, uh, he suddenly got very awkward. It's not that important. Still scared of the fierce fox, huh? Aura lightly rolled her eyes. Can you blame me? He didn't appreciate the comment. You still remember the punishments when I overdid it back when we were traveling together, right? Oh, maybe I should have her teach me some of those for future use. The female wolf liked the idea. How about you don't? Fan, however, did not. Everyone's in a fighty mood today, huh? Chloe sounded like she had mixed feelings about the group's current dynamic. I like it better when we get along. To be fair, while I agree, it would be kinda weird if there would never be any sort of fight. Sophia saw her point. Also, the war crime of being pushed into the snow aside, I'd say most of it is just some light bickering as usual. I guess so. The fox nodded. Also, getting pushed into snow is not a war crime. She couldn't agree with that part. Imagine being in a desert, and someone pushes you into the scorching sand, is that not a war crime to you? The blonde translated it into Chloe's most hated thing. She had a hard time coming up with a reply to that. Thank you for proving my point. Steph then got loud. I hate the heat, and Maya literally set me on fire. Fire resistant or not, it still got too toasty for my liking. Ha. Huh. The short tiger went silent, before looking at Maya. I tried to defend you because the snow thing was dirty, but she's got a point there. Yeah, the cat girl awkwardly scratched her cheek. I guess I really complained too much there. Sorry about that. As long as you understand, dot. The dog girl was happy with that. Once their differences aside and they forgave each other, Maya used air-based magic to free herself from the snow that was still sticking to her clothes, and the group was finally ready to continue to explore the mountain range in front of them. Their surroundings had turned into a complete winter wonderland with snow having piled up everywhere, and the only vegetation was some scattered pine trees, which also were covered in a thick layer of white snow. Is it just me, or are the four of you sticking quite close together? They found something loosely resembling a path where the snow wasn't quite as high and followed that for a while. As they were doing so, Chloe kept glancing at Ari, Anna, Sophia, and Maya. Well, I mean, even closer than usual. 
She noticed that there was absolutely zero space between the four while they were walking. We're cold. Every single one of them glared at her. Ah, uh, I see. As she was completely overpowered by the replies of the cats and the force behind it, the fox girl had nothing better to say. Are you really, though? Steph took a better look at them. I see no shivering, Anne. Is the snow below your feet melting? I don't want to get close, but you turned up the heating, didn't you? Obviously. The four were still in perfect sync. Then stop being so loud. Never. Sophia had no intention of complying with the request of her sister. We might be physically warm thanks to my heating magic, but looking at all that snow makes us feel cold regardless. Exactly. The other three cats nodded in unison. You are by far the whiniest group of people I've ever met. Steph slowly shook her head. We're sorry for being cats. They had no intention of changing anytime soon. Also, syncing up with four people is seriously creepy. Again, we're sorry. Ah. She couldn't deal with them any longer. Chloe, let's take the lead and have some fun. Those four are too much for me. Okay. She liked the plan. But, if possible, I would be happy if we take an easy route up the mountain. I'm not a good climber, and the snow, as much as I love it, doesn't exactly make it any easier. That's fair. The dog girl smiled at her. Thanks to the snow, we also can't see the ground anymore, which makes it a little dangerous and easy to misstep. Taking it easy and being cautious really is the best approach in this snow paradise. Great. Chloe was happy that she didn't plan to be too reckless. Let's go. Steph grabbed the fox's hand, and the two started walking in front of the rest. Wait for me. Ora dashed after the duo. Snow isn't my favorite, and nothing beats getting comfy in front of a fireplace, but I still like to play in it. I knew I could count on you. The dog girl happily welcomed her, and the trio continued to increase the distance from the cats. You're sticking suspiciously close to us, Fenny. Dot. It was the cats, and one wolf that stayed behind. Does a certain someone want to stay warm, as well? Shush. He lightly growled at her. I don't mind the cold, but I can't say I like it, either. As long as it isn't too overbearing, I much prefer a warmer climate. Hee <laughs> hee. She liked his reply. As there also was no way she could tease him about this in the current situation, the blonde just patted her hip a few times. Come closer, my big guy, dot. Not saying no to that, Finn got close to Sophia's side and the five slowly followed after the much more motivated trio that had covered a good bit of distance already. Chapter 049, Enjoying the Simple Things Steph got her revenge after Maya used fire magic on her and the snow that was blocking the cave exit by throwing the cold-hating cat girl in a pile of powdery snow, which ended up in a bit of a fight between them, but they got over it before long. Afterward, they continued the exploration of the snowy mountain range. I really was hoping not having to see snow for a long time, but here we are. What have we done to deserve this punishment? Sophia, the other cats, and Fen were trailing behind on the mountain when the blonde started complaining again. That's what I'd like to know. Ari, Anna, and Maya were asking the same question. I mean, I could think of many things we did to deserve that, but... Shush. Sophia glared at him. We don't mention those things when we complain. Ah, my mistake. Anyway, I need some distraction. The blonde then looked at her fellow tiger. Anna, I think you mentioned that this mountain range is mostly unexplored? As far as I know, yes. The princess nodded. That tunnel we found was probably unknown to previous explorers, and getting to the top without advanced magic is quite a hard feat I don't know if this specific mountain has been conquered by our folk yet, but if this nightmare continues and we traverse deeper into the mountain range, we'll be the first. Aha, uh -huh, the blonde's expression turned complicated. Stop that right now. Ari didn't like the look on her face. What? She tilted her head. The thought you're having right now. No. What thought am I having? There's no need to feign ignorance. The jaguar glared at her. 
Your expression clearly showed that you got interested in the part where no one has fully explored this place yet and how you want to be the first to see the unknown. She then shook her head. No. Doesn't she know me a little too well? Sophia turned to look at Maya instead. Not really. The cat girl disagreed with her. It was pretty easy to figure out what you were thinking right now. I see. As she knew that she wasn't the hardest to read, the blonde decided against making an additional comment on it. What's your opinion on it, though? She was still looking at Maya. Ah. She scratched her cheek for a moment. On one hand, I definitely agree with Ari's reluctance to stay in this hell for any longer than absolutely necessary, but. But. The thought about seeing something nobody else has seen before is very intriguing. Her newfound passion for exploration had gotten the better of her. I'll be sticking close to you and your warming magic, though. She squeezed Sophia's arm that she had been clinging to the entire while saying the last part. Short dot. The owner of the arm didn't mind that in the slightest. Why? Ari was not a fan of her decision. We could be in this winter hell for at least a week if we're going to explore the whole area. T that's, the cat girl froze for a moment. That's a very convincing point, but. I still think it would be worthwhile if we could see something interesting. There's also one more massive advantage we'd gain if we pull through with this. Sophia tried to further convince the jaguar. Steph and Chloe hate the heat, and they will be as intolerable and annoying about that as we currently are. We're already here and suffering, so if we pull through it now, they will have no room to complain once we find a nice and toasty area to explore. They'll just have to agree to go. Amarimem, Ari growled for a moment, before looking at Anna. What do you think? Well, the princess tilted her head. I don't really care about Sophia's argument because Steph will agree regardless of the temperature if there's something interesting to explore. She will complain all the way through, she's Sophia's sister, after all, but she will definitely agree to whatever we find. Ha. Huh. The blonde scratched her cheek. You may have a point there. The initial idea of exploring the unknown is very alluring, though. Anna wasn't done yet. Being able to see a place of our kingdom no one has been to sounds amazing. Ah, you struck her princess bone. The jaguar let out a sigh. It's over now. Sorry. I want a reward from all three of you for that. Ari glared at the three treacherous cats. For me having to deal with snow because of you all again. Hmm, Maya stared at her for a moment. Not that kind of reward. She immediately cut her off. Hee <laughs> hee. The cat girl liked her reaction. I don't mind, Dot. Sophia just smiled at her. Whatever you want. Thank you. I look forward to it, Dot. I don't like the phrasing. This time, Anna got loud. I just said that it's not that kind of reward. The jaguar glared at her. Get out of the horny corner, you too. The blonde shook her head a few times. Yeah, do you need a timeout? Ari did the same. Should we try and catch up with the others? Fen noticed that it may have been a mistake to stay with the four and suggested regrouping now that they agreed to continue the exploration of the snowy mountain range. I love this place. Far in front of the others, the trio was happily exploring the area while Steph was having an especially good time. Yeah. Chloe nodded a few times. I have some mixed feelings about the amount of snow. Aura sounded a little dubious about the current situation. She currently was a little taller than a regular wolf, with her shoulder height being about one meter, and that came with a bit of a problem in their current situation. Only the very top of her back and her head were visible, as the snow was high enough to almost completely bury her inside of it. You look so adorable. The dog girl was having a great time watching the wolf jump forward in the snow only to immediately sink in again, causing a trail of holes in the snow behind her rather than a full path as she tried to traverse the terrain. Maybe I should transform to my regular size? Or remembered that she was normally at least twice as tall. Would that be as much fun, though? Steph smiled at her. You really enjoy even the simplest things to the fullest, huh? The wolf stared back at her. Absolutely. She gave her a strong reply. Everyone who does not, is living their life the wrong way. I love you. 
Chloe, who was living with the same motto, liked that a lot. Ehe, dot. You do have a point there. The female wolf also could sympathize with that. It is fairly entertaining to jump through the snow like that. It's not like we have to travel efficiently, either. Exactly. Steph reacted with a big nod. The cats will take forever to catch up with us, anyway, so we can take our time and play around as much as we want. The cats and fen. The fox slightly corrected her. Is there really that much of a difference? The dog tilted her head. He's pretty much an honorary cat at this point. He was just as lazy as the others during winter. Fair enough. His poor dignity. Aura tried her hardest to hold back a chuckle. He's a cute one, isn't he? Well, he couldn't be further away from being my type, but I definitely see your point. A male wolf wasn't Steph's partner of choice, after all. He's a good one. I like how wide his personality ranges. Chloe also was a fan of the male wolf. Finfin seems grumpy and complains a lot, but he goes along with absolutely everything. He often looks bored, but the moment someone mentions any remotely interesting magic, he gets more excited than any of us. He and Sophia also get along on a whole other level, so he has to be amazing. Hee <laughs> hee. Aura loved to hear her partner being praised. In some way or another, at least. Yeah, he and Sophia have a special bond. It makes me a little envious and sad that I wasn't there for Fen when he actually wasn't doing well. Hmm? Steph tilted her head. You heard about my accident when my teleport experiment went wrong? Where you almost died and ended up on the demon continent with amnesia? Yeah, I don't remember who told me, but I heard about that story before. The dog girl nodded a few times. Yes, that one. Aura paused for a moment. From what I've learned afterward, he kept looking for me for a long time until he eventually gave up. Gave up hard enough that he even stopped enjoying magic. Sophia was the one who made him enjoy life again after they met. She's a special kind of interesting oddball, after all. That's true. She agreed with the description of her sister. Well, one thing's for sure, Sophia is definitely no competition. Also, while I get why you'd be envious, the only thing you should be is being thankful here. I absolutely am. I will never not be thankful to Sophia for pulling Finn out of his low. They also helped each other get over a hard time, so it's natural they have a special connection. I'm fine with that, and happy, but it's just a tiny bit unfortunate I caused Finn's depressed state and wasn't there to help him. Still, I'm beyond glad he's doing so well now. He definitely changed for the better, thanks to Sophia, so everything is well. Good. Steph was glad about the happy end. Also, take this. Immediately after, she made a snowball and threw it at the wolf. That's for ruining the mood of our fun exploration with gloomy topics. Oi. Aura did not appreciate the sneaky attack and immediately fired back at the dog with the use of magic. After all, she was missing hands to do it the normal way. Let's go. As this was a declaration of war for Steph, their snowball fight officially started and countless balls of snow were flying through the air mere moments later. It didn't take long until Chloe was hit by a stray attack, which caused her to enter the fight and turned it into a three-way standoff. The trio continued to play around like that until the latecomer cats, including the male honorary one, finally caught up to them. Chapter 050, Braving the Cold Sophia and the other cats decided to tough it out and see the exploration of the snowy mountain range to the end. Ari still didn't want to and demanded a reward for having to be cold for so long, but the other three lost to the allure of exploring something new and exciting no one had ever seen before. Having a precedent against Steph and Chloe to rely on for later, when they want to visit a hot area, was a nice bonus. Someone's having a great time, huh? The group was finally reunited again, and the blonde rolled her eyes when she spotted the trio having a snowball fight. Welcome back, sis. Steph smiled at her. Join us. She then got ready to throw one in the tiger's direction. If one of these nasty cold bombs hits me, I'm going to change the climate of the whole mountain range. Sophia didn't feel like joining. 
my magic will turn everything here to summer instantly. Why wasn't that an option earlier? Ari seemed to like the plan. Shush. All right. Not wanting to risk it, the dog girl threw the snowball at Aura instead. What brings you here? I was sure you would have fled to the cottage in the domain by now. Why wasn't that an option earlier, either? The jaguar repeated herself. Why are you whining more than I am? Sophia stared back at her. Being whiny and annoying is my thing. Because I seriously hate the cold. She only got louder. Reward or not, I still load the plan we decided on earlier. Wow. The blonde almost sounded impressed. I underestimated how extreme you can be. Plan you decided on? Steph got interested in that part. What's that about? We have good news. Sophia smiled at her sister. We have terrible news. Ari wasn't smiling. What is it? Naturally, Steph had some issues following them. Please ignore her, she's in a bit of a bad mood right now. A bit? The jaguar glared at the blonde. Anyway, Sophia decided to also ignore her for the time being. We aren't exactly happy about it, but we decided to fully explore the mountain range and not find a way out. Seriously? The dog girl hadn't seen that one coming. That's amazing. Chloe sounded happy about it. Wait, where's the catch? Steph felt like there was something up with her decision. We're here already, and there might be something unknown ahead. The curiosity got the better of me in the end. Curiosity kills the cat, though. Ari was having a very gloomy day. You really are on a run, huh? Sophia glanced at the jaguar, before facing her sister again. Anna's also looking forward to seeing an area of the kingdom that hasn't been fully explored yet. Her princess bone got tickled there. I see. The dog girl smiled at her. So, no catch there? Don't worry about it, Dot. The blonde smiled back. Now I worry. It obviously had the reverse effect on her. They're totally going to hold this against us when they want to explore a hot area. Chloe immediately saw through it. Ehe, <laughs> Dot. The short tiger only reacted with a cheeky laugh. Really? That's fine by me. Steph wasn't bothered by it. Sure, I'll be complaining the entire time, but I'm not going to miss out on anything worthwhile to explore. Told you so. Anna sounded rather smug about having her reaction predicted accurately. There's zero tolerance for any funny business, though. Sophia suddenly got much more serious. Pushing me into the snow or anything else that makes me feel colder will result in the aforementioned immediate and violate climate change of the entire region. Understood. The dog girl gave her a firm nod. You being clumsy and face planting into a pile of snow doesn't count, though, right? Why would I do that? The blonde tilted her head. Because I know you. What's that supposed to mean? She didn't like the implication. But, yes, if it's my own fault, I won't do anything that drastic. She isn't speaking for everyone, though. Ari disagreed with her. I'll go all out and end everything, no matter the reason. I somehow like the dark Ari. Chloe was a fan of the stark difference in her personality. I disagree on this very occasion because of the topic, but in general, I agree because she gets pretty cool when she does that. Steph nodded a few times. Has she always been that bad with the cold? Maya faced Anna instead. We all were pretty, uh, passive during the winter, so I hadn't paid any attention, but she's worse than Sophia right now. And that means something. The blonde herself had to add that part. She's never been good with it, just like basically any feline, but this year somehow was especially bad. The princess shrugged. I have no clue why, though. This winter was even colder than usual. The jaguar loudly complained. Also, almost all feline races have subspecies that have adapted to colder climates and live in those regions. Jaguars are warm climates only, though. My ancestors never gave me any resistance to the cold. Your ancestors have been living in the capital for generations already. Anna rolled her eyes. They helped the tigers build it. And we have been suffering ever since. Ari didn't accept the complaint. 
look up the records. The Jaguar and Tiger families almost split up back when the capital was founded because we didn't agree with the location's climate. Wow. The princess had nothing else to say. To be fair, I think it takes a little longer than a few generations for a species to fully adapt to a new climate. Sophia sided with the jaguar. Thank you very much. Ari smiled at the blonde. Because of that, I can't deal with the cold a second time. You never complained about it so much in the previous years, though? Anna was a little confused over the level of whining the jaguar was currently on. Because of you. The black-haired girl just stared at her. Why me? The princess pointed at herself. I have always been pretty vocal about my dislike of the cold and got close to hibernating more than once. That's exactly the reason. She raised her voice a bit more. I tried to be strong so that not both of us became totally useless during the winter months. Thank you very much for your sacrifice. Anna was glad that she looked out for her. Why the change of heart now, though? Because of this group. She pointed at everyone around her. No one's trying to keep up an image and is just being themselves. As everyone said, I'm easily influenced, so I got more open, too. I try to preserve regular common sense by keeping everyone lightly in check, but when it comes to holding back personal things, everyone rubbed off on me. You're welcome, Dot. Sophia took partial credit for that. Yeah, you helped a lot with that. The jaguar felt the need to put an emphasis on the word help there. Hee <laughs> hee. The blonde enjoyed the slight glare that was accompanied by her reply. You know, if it's really that bad with the cold, which is totally understandable, we don't all have to go through it. Oh? Ari's interest was piqued. Tell me more, please. Well, it isn't limited to the cold, either. If someone feels unwell or has decided on a lazy day, it's not like the entire group has to take a break. Sophia scratched her cheek. Whoever feels that way can just relax in the cottage or play around in the other parts of my domain while the rest of the group is out traveling in the regular world. If there's something interesting, we can still go and collect the ones that stayed behind in the domain. I mean, Faye and Mira also come and go whenever they feel like it. I like the sound of that. The Jaguar was an instant fan. That's actually a great idea. Steph agreed with her. Sometimes, we're just walking through the same plane the entire day, and it might be more fun to work on a biome in the domain instead. And if enough opt out of the plane's exploration, I can run through it at full speed and get a nice workout. That sounds great. Steph immediately turned around on her suggestion and sided with her sister instead. Yeah, if that happens, I'll definitely stay in the domain. Anna hated everything she just heard. I'll definitely keep you company there, too. Chloe felt the same as the princess. It seems like we came up with a decent plan, huh? Sophia was glad that everyone liked her suggestion. Even so, while it was my suggestion, and it's true that everyone needs some alone time here and there, I'd still prefer if we do as much as possible together, though. The more, the merrier has become my motto since coming to this world, after all. Absolutely. Everyone felt the same. Great. All right. Steph then energetically raised her arm. For now, let's explore more of this lovely mountain. Let's go. Chloe was a big supporter of the plan. Ah. Ari froze for a moment. You know what, now that there's a way out for me, I think I'll try to finish today together with everyone else. That sure is a massive change of heart after you were that against it just minutes ago. The dog girl lightly tilted her head. Do you want me here, or do you not? She just glared at her. Let's go. Steph stopped the teasing immediately. Once all of that was taken care of, everyone continued to explore and travel up the mountain a little further. Still, as the snow piled up more and more the higher they got, progress was slow even for the massively overpowered group they were.